explain the advantages and disadvantages to horses that stand be tight behind or lock the hocks versus a horse that is bred so that their legs are in alignment with their hip joints. Locking the hocks and tight behind uh, means, it's a term that means a horse that's been bred to stand close behind. So not just with their hocks touching, but their ankles as well. Stand up. So it's, don't confuse it with cow hocked. It's not where the hocks touch and the ankles leave in the outside direction. So breeding horses tight behind or locking the hocks is something that came out of the hitch show pen. If you breed them tight behind, it takes away that outside lateral support that they need to push off to canter. It's essentially, it's a natural way to hobble their hocks together so that they can't reach and extend. It just feels uncomfortable for them to canter. If you've ever seen draft horses that are bred so that they're tight behind, when they canter, they'll essentially canter with their hocks tight together and short strided. Okay? They can't, they can't seem to reach and when they do tend to turn, they're going to want to break to trot because it's easier to find balance in that gait. So they, it's, it's a way of being able to put 6A horses together, get them to trot with animation and strength and forward motion without breaking. We don't want one of those horses in 6 and 8 up horses to break to canter. So if you breed them tight behind, it serves that purpose. Okay, so where does the power of the horse come from? It comes from the large muscle groups in the hindquarters. From about the hack down, there is no muscle. It's bone and tendons. So if you think about mechanics in motion and kinetics, Power and force is best optimized when everything is in alignment. So when you break those lines, you actually weaken or take away the ability for force to be applied. So as far as locking the hocks goes, pretty much the benefit to that is that it creates an amazing hitch horse. They can trot and trot hard without breaking the canter. So this is what I look for in a performance pertron. A performance pertron should be able to walk, trot, and canter with engagement, cadence, and balance. To do that, they need that outside lateral support underneath their hips to be able to push off to canter and hold that balance and cadence on a circle. Here we have a three-year-old Percheron cantering in slow motion on a 60-foot circle. This horse has just recently started his training under saddle. He hasn't yet learned how to carry a rider correctly. Despite this, he shows a natural ability to easily push off with his outside hind leg into his canter stride. Note how his inside hind leg reaches deep underneath himself, finding his center of balance, and placing it where the front inside foot has just left the ground. This horse's hind leg alignment has given him the lateral support he needs to reach and engage his hind quarters. horse that you're trying to train to canter, take a look at that horse and ask yourself, are they designed to be able to do that? Are they able to balance themselves laterally on the outside to hold that canter? I hope this helps people understand maybe 
be a little less frustrated for, with your horse if they aren't able to pick up the canter well. Um, it's not that they can't canter, they certainly can. They're just not going to be able to do it comfortably and naturally if they're closer behind. Um, there's no right or wrong to it, just depends on what you want to do with them and, and what type of disciplines you're into. Um, don't forget to like or dislike this video in the, or comment below. Any questions you have, I'll do my best to answer for you. And uh, y'all have a great day. I thought I would share a little bonus takeaway for those new to the draft horse world. As you can see in this picture, this team of greys had a horse that was in alignment and one that was built tight behind. I used this team in the winter on a wagon without brakes. Both were shot all the way around with snow pads and borium. In my experience with them, going down a hill, the one in alignment was better able to set back into the britching and hold the load. The other one that was tight behind and towed out a little bit was constantly trying to regain his footing because he wanted to ski out to the sides. This made it more difficult for him to hold the load.